Currently, our application uses SQL Server as the database provider. Now, this is an issue if we want to deploy this application because that means our users are going to have to spin up their own instances of SQL Server in order to use the application. Now, that's probably something they don't want to do. So instead, what we're going to do is switch to SQLite, which is just a file database, and we can just create one of those at runtime, and our users aren't going to have to configure anything. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is come into our simple trader entity framework project and manage NuGet packages. And let's take a look at what version of Entity Framework Core we're using, 3.1.7. I could update right now, but I'll do that another time. So 3.1.7, let's remember that. Entity Framework SQLite. And the second package right here, Microsoft.Entity Framework Core SQLite. And the latest version is 3.1.9. But as we remember, our Entity Framework Core version was 3.1.7. So we need to install that as our version here. The versions need to be the same for this to work. So let's go ahead and install that. Accept. And there we go. Now we have the SQLite database provider so we can connect to a SQLite database. And to do that, all we have to do is switch our DB context configuration in this add DB context. Instead of use SQL Server, use SQLite. So that's the beauty of Entity Framework super easy to switch out providers. Now this add db context, I strictly have this for migrations, but in my application I actually use this simple trader db context factory. So I'm gonna have to go in here and switch this to use SQLite. I don't like how I have to configure this in two places, so I'm gonna refactor this a bit and keep it all in one place in just a little bit, but for now that's actually all we needed to do to use SQLite. But now we need to actually connect to a database. So we get our connection string from our app settings.json and if we look at this, this is a SQL Server connection string and we need a SQLite connection string. So what we're going to do is create a new connection string. We'll call this SQLite and this is going to be very simple. It's going to be data source equals simple trader.db. So this is just the path to our database file from our application exe and it's a relative path. So basically our database is going to be in the same folder as our exe, which we should probably change in the future because since the db is going to be right next to the exe, that means if the user installs some kind of update, then the updated version might not know how to access this database because it's going to be right next to the old exe. So we'll have to solve that in the future, but for now, just going to work on connecting to the database. And let's update our connection string to be SQLite, which is what we named our connection string. And actually, let's get rid of the old one. We're done with SQL Server. So now we're using SQLite. We got a connection string. Let's run migrations and create this database. So we're going to come to our package manager console. And I actually already have migrations from my SQL Server database. Now, in some cases, when you switch providers in any framework, your old migrations won't work. So sometimes it might be a good idea to separate your migrations based on your provider. But we're not going to be getting into that because these migrations will work on our SQLite database. So we're just going to run update database, no more migrations to create, and there we go, everything works. And as we can see, it actually created this DB file in our solution. So now we're ready to test this out, and even though I don't have an account created in this database, I'm just going to log in and make sure that we actually connect. And it says no such table accounts. Now that's a little bit weird because we just did our migrations. So let's actually view the data in this database. So to do that, we can manage extensions. And I've installed the SQLite slash SQL Server Compact Toolbox. So what I can do is come up to View, Other Windows, and SQLite Server Compact Toolbox right here. Open up that window, and I can connect to my SQLite database. So add SQLite connection from current solution. We can do that because we have this database file in our solution. So let's do that. Boom, there's our database. Look at the tables, and the account database table is there. So why are we getting this error? Well, as we recall, with our connection string, this is a relative path to our database file from our exe. So coming to the file explorer, we have our simple trader db file here that we ran migrations against, as you can see, 32 kilobytes. But if we come into our bin debug, and we go to our exe, which is where we run the application from, the database file here is zero kilobytes, so obviously it doesn't have our migrations applied. 
and this file was just generated on our first database query. So we have two options here. We could copy this database file to our output directory with all the migrations applied to it, but that doesn't really help us because say if we actually added data to this database file, then when we publish the application and deploy it, then our users aren't gonna have a fresh database file if we forget to clean it out first. So instead, what we're gonna do is create our database on startup here in our app.xaml.cs and apply our migrations there. And this is actually super simple with NAD Framework. So what we can do is get our simple trader DB context factory, and we're gonna get that from our host services. So get required service for our simple trader DB context factory. And then we can use that to get a simple trader DB context using create DB context. And that's gonna give us back our DB context that is configured to connect to our SQLite database. So now we can access that database with context database and we can run our migrations against that database. And if the database doesn't exist, it's gonna create it. And if it already does exist and it has migrations applied, then it's just gonna do nothing. So now I'm just gonna delete this DB file right here. We don't need it. And I'm gonna come into my bin and just delete this database file here so we get a fresh start. And now I can run this and we'll go back to our bin. Here's our simple trader database file, 32 kilobytes. So it actually has content in it, which is our actual database tables. So now if I come back in here, still don't have an account, but I can try to log in. And instead of getting a connection error that our table doesn't exist, we get username does not exist. So it did actually check the table and give us back a result. So now this is great because if we deploy this application, our users are gonna have their database created immediately when they create the application, no server to spin up or anything like that, and really no configuration at all. And now that we have this database file right next to our application here in our bin, if you ever wanna clean out your bin, you don't just wanna delete this because that's also gonna delete your database and all your test data. What you can do instead is of course use the clean functionality in Visual Studio, which you should probably use anyways. And if we clean, then it's gonna get rid of everything but our database file, so we're not gonna lose our test data. I suppose this is another reason why you shouldn't have your database file right next to your exe, just in case you do delete your debug file. So the last thing I wanna do is clean up this configuration here because I have this duplication of my database configuration where I use SQLite here, and also use SQLite in my DB context factory. So what I'm gonna do is move this configuration into a variable, and this is an action that takes a DB context options builder. So let's set that up. I'll call this configure DB context, and it's just gonna equal this action. And then I can pass that action to my add DB context method, and then also pass the action to my DB context factory and then generate a constructor in my DB context factory that is gonna use that action. So here we go, here's the constructor. I can get rid of my old constructor that takes a connection string because this configured DB context action already knows the connection string. I can make this read only. And now I can call configured DB context and give it my options. So conveniently, I already have my options defined right here. So I can just use those, get rid of my use SQLite, and now all my configuration is here in my app.xaml.cs, so I can just change it in one place. So there we go, we're now using SQLite. So we installed the SQLite provider for NAD Framework, we updated our connection string, and we're now even doing migrations on startup. The only potential issue is that our database file is next to our exe, which could cause issues but other than that, we are one step closer to potentially deploying this application. And our users aren't gonna have to configure some kind of SQL server. So hopefully this was helpful and hopefully you can apply SQLite to your own applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.